you're you're down in New Orleans. What's going on there? Well, it, it's the um, convention for the American Legislative Exchange Council, which is a, a giant conservative think tank, uh, basically a, a corporate think tank um, that puts together. Uh, literally writes legislation for legislators, uh, tells them how to get it passed. Uh, literally, is like dating service setting up corporate lobbyists and state legislators. And the culmination is the uh, passing of special interest legislation. And uh, I'm here just to kind of find out what's up and what they're uh, planning for the next legislative session. I was reading your blog and and uh, your notes. You know what what I did on my summer vacation from uh, Alec Watch. And yeah. and uh, or more, or more, Mark Pocan W I dot blogspot dot com, and you're talking about a phone call you overheard as soon as you arrived at the airport in New Orleans. Oh, it was it was amazing. I mean, literally, I get you know land in New Orleans. I get to the baggage carousel and I hear this woman behind me talking on the phone, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm uh, at the American Legislative Exchange Council meeting, and you know we write legislation and people pass our ideas. It's the free market. <laughs> it's the like, free wow, market. That's you- pretty- that summed it up right there. You too can buy a legislator. Now, yeah. y- you are a state legislator, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm wondering, has Alec ever approached you and said, we'd like you to join, we'd like you to come to these meetings, we'd like you to ha- hang out in the fancy resorts and go to the, I understand there were five <laughs> major parties last night where the, where the booze and the cigars and, and the campaign contributions were flowing generously. Uh, have they ever invited you? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, no, I mean, I've come on my own because uh, I've come twice now to write articles for the Progressive magazine, and that's what I'm doing this time. But what's really funny is, you know, all these parties, I never got any invites for. They're very careful how they do these, you know, fancy receptions at night. But I heard about the cigar one, so I went and attended it. And uh, once I got in, I was asked to leave by the Alex staff. So uh, I You're kidding. For every, no, absolutely. But so you're a state legislator. For... You're the guy that they're trying. And this was what, the one put I on by the you. tobacco company, right, by RJR? Uh, yes, yes, I'm paying dues. I um, actually was invited. I, the lobbyist from Wisconsin was there. Told me how glad he was to see me. I went to look for him to get clearance to be there. And uh, right. finally, I, I had an unlit cigar. I just put it into the guy's name badge holder around his neck, and I said I'd leave. But, uh, yeah, they um, certainly um, not a bipartisan open organization they claim there. So you paid the 100 buck annual fee. I, it's it's 100000 for a corporation, but it's $100 for a legislator. And you paid the $100 fee. You're actually a member now of ALEC. And, yep. and they threw you out because they figured out that you weren't one of the ones who was there to be bought off. Yeah, and they've been doing that with a number of the groups that are here, too. I mean, there's one uh, young guy from the Center for, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the media. I'm forgetting the name of the group. But anyway, he's been kicked out every single time yeah. he comes up to the But well, we had Lee Fong on, on the TV show last night from the Center for American yeah. Progress, and he, he not only did he get kicked out yesterday, but he got roughed up to the point that he's got you know, wounds on his, on his hands and wrists. Yeah, I ran into him, actually, as I was, just after I got kicked out of the party, I ran into him, and I saw his hand, and the other guy got even, he was bleeding, and the person with him. So. Yeah. Yeah, so these guys are playing hardball in, in keeping the press out. I knew that, but I didn't realize that, you know, as a legislator, you are a state representative. You are their target audience, and you paid your $100 to be there, and they're throwing you, I, that, that just blows my mind, like, only for sale Congress or uh, state representatives and state senators are allowed. Uh, it just exactly. it blows my mind. I mean, so what, just in the five minutes we have left here, um, give, our, give our listeners and viewers a, a quick capsule uh, summary of who ALEC is and what they're yep. all about. This was started, by the way, by Paul Weyrick. I've played the clip a million times on this show where he says, you know, we don't, you know, our leverage goes up as the voting populace goes down. Uh, I don't want everybody to vote. That's a verbatim quote from Paul Weyrick. He was the original founder of this back in the 70s. And, but now it, it, was, re, it was revived in the late 90s, I guess, by the Koch brothers and uh, nearly out of bankruptcy. And now it's doing what? Well, I, what they essentially do is, it, like I said, it's a dating service for uh, corporate lobbyists and legislators. They get you together. Uh, they have you write legislation. They have task force that, interestingly, uh, are made up of half legislators and half industry lobbyists. And you need an, a vote of majority vote from each group for something to advance. So you actually, not only do they write the legislation, but then they vote on the legislation. The corporation. Uh, to, yes. <laughs> for it to actually move forward. Amazing. Uh, you know, yeah, and, I, I go ahead. Oh, I don't know. And, and so, I mean, in fact, I was in a task force on uh, tax policy, and the legislative members voted to make a bill a little better, and the corporations voted against it. Therefore, the amendment didn't pass because they were actually able to veto something to make it less onerous. 
To what extent, you are a, a Wisconsin state legislator. To what mm-hmm. extent, what, uh, how much of the legislation that you're seeing introduced into the state house in Wisconsin is coming out of ALEC in terms of, you know, the, the really big stuff? I'm not talking about the, you know, let's rename this school or let's uh, argue about the right. state flower, uh, but, but the really that- big stuff. The vast majority, all the attacks on collective bargaining rights, all the changes to pension law, um, all of the uh, cuts that we've seen in education and the reforms, uh, and I say that my fingers flapping uh, in education, all of these are parts and parcel of workshops and uh, task force that I've been through. So um, definitely seeing uh, the real effect of those things. And even more important is, you know, they're already telling us that they're changing the names of things that uh, people started to catch on to, Mm -hmm. uh, like Tabor. And now they're calling them uh, the Pension Protection Act and things like that to try to pass off the same old ideas. Uh, And they even said, these don't work in blue states, so we had to change the names. (laughs) Wow. Now, you know, in 1932, 33, I, I forget which year it was, maybe even 34, it was around that time, uh, Benito Mussolini f- in Italy uh, famously dissolved the elected parliament and said, we're going to try something new. And so in every legislative district in Italy, instead of the people electing a representative, the largest corporation in that district chose a representative to sit in the parliament. And he even changed the name of the parliament to the Cameo de Fazizio Corporaciones, the Chamber of Fascist Corporations. And he gave a name to this. It was called fascism. And he said, and this is in the Italian encyclopedia, actually Giovanni Gentile wrote it, but it was signed, you know, he ghost wrote it for Mussolini. Um, He said, you know, corporatism, uh, fascism should more correctly be called corporatism for it's the merger of state and corporate interests. How is this different? Um, not much at all. In fact, uh, the last workshop, they literally referred to the legislators as the football team and the corporate lobbyists making presentations were our coaches. Uh, and they used, that was their words in explaining. So we're definitely being told that even if you know, you're not a part of a corporation, you're being told uh, by them what to do. And uh, it's very clear and evident from everything I've seen. How many legislators are there and what percentage of them are from each party? Um, there's about 2,000 people overall here. I would guess uh, a third to a half are legislators. Um, not a lot of diversity. I would guess a handful of Democrats, uh, mostly Republicans. And um, th- that's been pretty much my past experience, too, with the organization. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> amazing. And, and now this is starting to see some light of day. Uh, does that seem to be slowing them down, or are they coming up with strategies to get around it? We have about a half a minute left here, sir. No, literally, I'm walking around because I keep having staff go around on the hallways trying to find people doing something. So it's been difficult. As I've had the interview, I've tried not to stand in one spot. Oh, it really? It certainly is not a welcoming place. They are, they are <laughs> trying to kick you out because even though you're a, a member in good standing, you're blowing the whistle on them. Re- Representative, yeah. State Representative Mark Pocan, representing the 78th District of Wisconsin, so ably. Sir, thanks so much for the great work you're doing. Thank you, Tom. Great talking with you.